This was an investigation that should have never taken place. Uh, you have guys like Comey. You have uh, McCabe. You have Strook. You have uh, his lover, Lisa Page. You have all of these people running around. You have Brennan and Clapper, who lied to Congress. You have uh, many, many people. You have people that change documents going into the FISA courts. And uh, it's a terrible thing. And this is an investigation that they said should have ended before it started. It shouldn't have started. And if it did, it should have ended immediately, because they found, as you know, as well as I do. They found nothing initially, but it went on for two years or longer. And uh, now I did. I'm getting rave reviews for what I did for Roger Stone. And he, frankly, is going to go and now appeal his case. So that was President Trump's response yesterday when asked about the criticism that he is facing after commuting Roger Stone's sentence, though a lot of people not satisfied uh, with that answer, to say the least. Joining me now, professor of political science at Brown University and author of the book, The Oath and the Office, A Guide to the Constitution for Future Presidents, Corey Bretschneider. Um, he's here with his latest piece for The Atlantic entitled The Traditional Interpretation of the Pardon Power um, is Wrong. Corey, good morning to you. It's, it's been a while. Okay. Great to see yes. you this morning. And thank you so much for Great joining us. You. Appreciate it. Um, why do you think why do you think the president's use of power here um, was unconstitutional or unlawful when commuting Roger Stone's sentence? Uh, the pardon power is traditionally thought to be uh, unlimited, that it could be used um, uh, without exception. And uh, there's one instance that the Constitution gives that says, actually, there is a limit. Uh, and that's cases of impeachment. It says, except in cases of impeachment. Now, traditionally, that's just thought to mean that the president can't interfere with an impeachment inquiry or undo a punishment, can't stop or undo an impeachment. But what we show in the piece very carefully uh, is that actually the original idea, the original understanding of that clause was actually to stop presidents from being involved with co-conspirators. And the framers were worried about a president that could take a co-conspirator, uh, uh, work with them, promise a pardon, uh, and get away with breaking the law. And we're saying not just that some of the framers were worried about this, not just that the text is there that would allow us to stop that, but that's the best understanding of the document as a whole, that we're a nation of laws and that the president is beholden to the law. And when the president undermines the main check on the presidency, which is impeachment, uh, the pardon is not valid, that he has to be stopped. And that's the real meaning of this uh, phrase, except in cases of impeachment. So, so how does the president get away with this, Corey? You know, it's an incredible thing that over time people have, have thought that the power is so great that he could do anything, even really commit a crime in broad daylight. And let's just get clear on what this president is saying that he can do. Roger Stone has come out and said that, you know, basically I'm being rewarded for protecting this president, for not saying anything in the congressional inquiry during impeachment. That's my reward. And in broad daylight, people have become, I think, just lost the meaning of the Constitution to to the point where they think, well, that's allowed. There isn't a stop. And we're trying to say to people, no, that's not what the history, what the text, and most of all, what the structure and values of the document require. They require a president to be stopped when he tries to use a pardon illegally, unconstitutionally. And we've got to start to realize that in this country. And judges uh, and citizens need to speak out against this pardon, not just being wrong. Everyone knows that it's immoral, uh, but that it's illegal. It's invalid. It's unconstitutional. So once again, it sounds to me like what you're saying, this is also falling on one's own interpretation of presidential powers, which we well know the attorney general believes is all uh, that that basically presidential <laughs> powers includes everything and and um, and that um, he can really do anything as president of the United States as Bill Barr. Um, has said in one way, shape or form. So, so, so what does that mean ultimately? Because there's so much gray area when it seems like something like this should be black and white. 
Uh, it really is black and white. And the attorney general has embarrassed himself before the nation and before history when he basically says that the president has monarchical powers. Any seventh grader who studies civics knows that we were trying to avoid absolute monarchy, that even the British had limits on the king, and that certainly the Americans who uh, founded this country were trying to get away from the idea of absolute monarchy and to stress the idea of a limited presidency. We don't have a king. We don't have a president for life the way that this president sometimes suggests he wants to be. We don't admire dictators. We have created a system, a structure of the presidency that is limited by Congress, that is limited most importantly by the law, that refrain that no person, including the president, is above the law. And unfortunately, somehow we've forgotten that. We've become so uh, weakened by this president's continual crimes that we're failing to see that he is in broad daylight uh, really violating, going against the structure, the values of this Constitution. And that means uh, a presidency constrained by law. And this is a lawless presidency. All right, Corey Brett Schneider, thank you as always. Way to come back um, and rejoin us with quite a bang there. Um, a good piece, though. You should um, read it if you have an opportunity. Thank you, Corey. Great to see you this morning. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.